again, everybody. Uh, good to be with you again on this Wednesday. Uh, if you were at church or watched online this past Sunday, we worked through Luke uh, chapter 10, or at least the second half of it, where we talked about the Good Samaritan uh, and that parable that Jesus uh, is famous for uh, sharing with us. And then we worked into Mary and Martha. And because of the nature of the time, we, we spent a little bit more time on the Good Samaritan. So I want to spend some time this morning or this week on the idea of Martha and Jesus' interaction with her and her sister Mary. And, and as you may remember from the, the setting, Jesus had been busy and he brings his disciples, most likely would have been with his entourage there and came to Mary and Martha's house and, and had time with them and, and spent some time, must have eaten, I'm sure, that kind of thing. And, and Martha is busy cleaning up, looking at her sister who is sitting at the feet of Jesus, uh, just engaging, not in hearing what he's teaching and, and just being present with him. And Martha doing what, what we would most likely do too. There's a lot of details to get care of, take care of. Again, she fed people. She's cleaning up. She's trying to get all the things done so she too can sit with Jesus perhaps. And and there's that ongoing thing. And, and Jesus looks at her and says, essentially, you're busy with all kinds of things. And I get it, but you're missing the most important thing. Uh, Chuck Swindoll tells a story about life and ministry for him. As you can imagine, a busy man. And he was in the midst of a, a busy stretch at, uh, at church and in work. And, and he came home that night, just like any of us uh, could be tempted to do, no matter our vocation preoccupied and he was uh, on to the next. There was lots of things going on in his mind and, and he was short with his wife. He was in a hurry when he shared something. Uh, it was really quick and just just not really fully present. And, and his, I'm sure his wife and he and other children had some exchanges there. But in the midst of his hustle, uh, his one of his children came up to him and, and kind of stood and tugged at his arm a little bit. Dad, 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 I, I, have, I have something I want to tell you. I promise I'll go really, really fast. And, and it hit him that of all the hustle and bustle with what he had going on, here was his daughter, which should be among the most important uh, pieces, persons in his life that he had to just Take a deep breath, remember what was important, and give her the time that she deserved instead of all the other things that we get preoccupied with. And, and we all have that. We all get that. And so I want to talk a little bit about Martha and how this all worked and played out for her. I want to share a little bit, you know, with the connection that Jesus made to her, that Martha, you're, you're forgetting the most important thing. And that's a relationship with Jesus. Later on uh, in her life, the book of John, John writes about another famous story about the death of Martha and Mary's brother, Lazarus. I mentioned on, on Sunday that, that the three of them were very close friends with Jesus. John writes that in the beginning part of chapter 11 of John. But later on, after Lazarus had died, uh, then there's this interchange again between Jesus and Martha. And I just want to read it to you. Uh, Martha's distraught because of the death of her brother. And she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, oh, I, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. She knew she was familiar with Jesus' teachings about such a thing. But Jesus said to her, these, for that famous passage that maybe you've memorized uh, in your life, but I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? He looked at Martha in vision as he said that. And she replied, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. That tells me a lot about Martha's response to what Jesus has said earlier to her about who is first, what is most important for, for her. 
Because later on, as she faces Jesus, as she hopes that he'll save her brother, he, she also recognizes why she looks to him. Because he is the Messiah, the, the, her Lord, the Son of God. She knows that. Now, we might think, well, of course he is. But as far as I can tell, I might, maybe I'm not thinking of somebody, but besides Peter famously saying that he is the Messiah, as Jesus asked, who do you say I am? Martha's the only other one that I know of that's recorded as such. She's the, one of the first people to say out loud who Jesus is or who she believes Jesus is. The part that I think is really cool about that is that it shows, again, that, the, that what Jesus taught her stuck, that she was able to, to keep growing in her understanding of who Jesus is. And, and I think that that's something that, that we all can take. The, the idea, I hope that you've thought Sunday after Sunday, I've, I hope you've heard that lesson, that idea of, of what's most important, remembering what's most important. And again, that's that relationship that Jesus desires to have with you as well. Will you have a response similar to Martha's response at another point in your life? Do you live as though Jesus is Lord of your life? That's my encouragement for you today, that we could all learn and grow like it appears Martha did. Have a great week. Uh, enjoy the fall season, the colors as they shift uh, into bare trees soon enough. May you have a great week. Praying for you.